Welcome back to Mud, Dust and Gears as we pick up on the closing stages of the Malopo 250, the opening round of the Northern Region Cross Country Championship Racing Series in Freiburg. We've already picked up on most of the categories, the guys at the back of the pack with the Z categories. And these had seen a huge attrition rate. The Z9 of Hodgman and Strauss were still in the mix and only just as well. Some body panels starting to hang off the Nissan hard body. They had really been in the wars and had to fight hard just to stay within the time bracket. Some fairly obvious transmission problems there. It would be nail biting to see if they could make it to the finish line and that within the time bar bracket. For now, the Z9 was trucking on. Rule of thumb in off-road racing. Must just bring it home, no matter what. And another story, a heartbreak on the day. Kennedy and Van Pletsen in the bat. The former Gibson race vehicle, a flat front right-hand tire, and they were limping it home. No such problems, though, for our flag-to-flag -flag race leaders. The Alfa Renault Duster of Johan van Stoden and Mike Lawrenson. First to see the flag in 2018. A classy drive and showing that all that development that they put in over the last 14 months on the Alfa Renault Duster is starting to really pay off as they head to Dakar. We said this was going to be a threat on the day and they proved us right. Bjarke and Killian bringing home a classy win in their category and a second overall, beating out Yanni Fisser and Chris Fisser Jr. who had unfortunately suffered power steering problems throughout the race but still brought it home in the number two spot for their category and third place overall. Francois van der Waltz and Harry Prinsloo had, as I'm famous for saying, plowed the field and brought home an incredible drive, making the most passes over any other car on the race. Markham Koch and Sean Van Stott and a new pairing had lined themselves up early in the morning and were happy to bring it home. Keith the Toy and Robbie Kutsia walked away with the first of the special vehicles and the bat had had an incredible drive. Meanwhile, out there on the track, two of the surviving invitational cars were getting the job done. Team Bradbury and GJ Clarsen in their Can-Am X3 were in survival mode and looking for their first checkers as they beat out on Ronnie Burtis and Etienne Fenta for the win. Get used to seeing these side-by-sides, they are part of the sport now. Andre Kildanais and Victor Fincham did a great drive to bring home a classy top 10 and they were looking at podiums, podiums, podiums in the Class E's. Special vehicles and what a drive. Tinas and Tian Leroux in the Sandmaster, very gutsy performance. And no one was going to touch him in the Class P Championship. He had one hand on the trophy already and it was just coming out of round one of the Championship Race Series. Austin did an incredible job as well to chase the cheese in the Class Ds. They also squeaked inside of a top 10, ninth place overall in fact. And beating out on Didrik and Rickus Hutting on the D67. So by now all cars on track were bringing it home for the final time of asking and looking forward to drawing a line under round number one. An incredible day of racing at Freiburg and the Freiburg Motor Club delivered the goods once again to start things off for an epic 2018 championship chase. All the trophies were lined up and ready and it was the formality of getting the big high five. Everyone wants the results at round number one because to win a championship you've got to get your name on the page early on. A well supported race and a well supported prize giving as everyone knew exactly what they had to do to get themselves ready for what was to come. This was round number one. Round number two would be the Barbers Band 500 just down the road on the 23rd and 24th of March. So for now, it was a little bit of cleanup, maybe the odd rebuild, but everyone knew exactly what was coming down the road. A couple of new names as well coming into the mix. Young Skitter, as well as a few other guys rolling out some new equipment. But here's what it looked like when we went through the category breakdowns in the race. Class P was all about Tinas and Tian LaRue in the Sandmaster. They got the win over Tony and Mikey Gavea in their CRT. In the Class E productions, Rodney Cook alongside Yako Skitter took their first win ahead of Hildenace and Fincham with Duplessis and Formark rounding out the top three in their Isuzu. Class D 
had Van der Waltz and Prinsloo in the Toyota Hilux, winning out ahead of Jaco and Johan Wieser, and Van Veek and Marais rounding out a top three, and a Toyota lockout of the podium. In the overalls, it was Francois Van der Waltz and Kerry Prinsloo who walked away with the big win ahead of the Visas and Van Veek and Marais just beating out on Cook and Skitter. In the Class X, Diarca and Killian, a classy drive to beat out on the Fissers and the Kutsiers. Class Z, all about TJ Hodgman alongside JP Strauss, the only finishers with a high attrition rate in the Class Z category. National Invitational, no surprise to see the overall winner, Johan Van Stodden and Mike Lawrenson in the Alfa Renault Duster, beat out Malcolm Koch and Sean Van Stodden ahead of Keith Toy and Robbie Kutsier. In the Invitational Class Gs, that's our SXS side-by-sides, Dean Bradbury and Timmy Burtis were the big winners. So that's it. Round number one is in the bag and in the can, and everyone is now thinking about round number two. We'll be bringing you all the action, and a big thank you to Max Pretor.